Until this day you wanna front Ooh. Yo, peace goes out to the, the, the gods Gods Ah, uh, yeah The, the, the gods Yo, you know what? If y'all want, y'all go ahead and flow to it Go ahead and flow to it a little bit The, 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 the gods Coming on for you Now I'll bring you in You ready? Coming in on four in Spanish Watch out show Uno, do, tre, cuatro Blah, blah, Choice with the golden voice in the cyber spear. Oh my dear. Check it out. Another story here. It was a pretty good little meet and greet that we had in Miami in the bottom. It was a crazy time, man. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh okay, this is how it went down. Let's just talk a little bit about this crazy convention. It was called uh, How Could I Be Down? And it was running um in 96, I believe it was the summer. And um, let's just go through it. It was it was just a wild time because you, once again, there was no internet, no phones, no computers. And the funniest thing about it, you, you just thought that this was the existence. It was no nothing beyond that. You just wanted to get this product out. You wanted to see how you could network to get a product out. Everything was physical, and you didn't think nothing of it. You didn't think it was going to go to a different type of a um, platform. Like Once again, this is hard to imagine it, but you got to imagine, like put your phone down, imagine like life with no phones, no inter-technological connections at all. So you had to get into a car with product and drive to an event so that you could uh, promote the product uh, face-to-face, live and in person um, with a with a crew that could disperse different blocks or uh, get on uh, a panel and discuss something afterwards, spread your product around, your physical product. So you would have to have boxes of stuff with you um, so that you could disseminate this product to various people inside of different areas of a conference. This was happening uh, quite often in the 90s, and we were there at one of the one of the craziest, flyest uh, conferences that was, the mid-90s, How Could I Be Down? Um, the vibe of the 
conference was this. Imagine like um, Black Beach Week with Freak Nick. That was the vibe, but it was uh, all different types of ethnicities. It was um, it was very much a party vibe. And then being that it was in Miami, it, it kind of elevated that party vibe uh, even higher. But, you know, since I was rolling with uh, the Insomniac, he was working the magazine, the physical product side of the magazine. So it was... Um, you know, no partying at all with those guys. I mean, the Insomniac crew was strictly business. So we wanted to get into as many panel discussions as possible to interview whoever was hot to get some type of a station ID from anybody that's walking on the street. Because, um, you know, people that you could meet at How Can I Be Down, they were just they were just there on the street. You could just roll down your window, jump out the car real quick, meet somebody, take a flick, get an autograph, shake some hands. Um, uh, it was what, what, who did I meet down there? It was everybody? It was, uh, Dougie Fresh, Grandmaster Kaz, Daz Dillinger. This is a few names I remember meeting. Uh, Red Alert, uh, DLC. After he lost his voice, <laughs> uh, Jam Master J. Um. We met um, Grandmaster, what's his name? Uh, Grandmaster D from Houdini, uh, Mob D, Funkmaster Flex. A lot of cats, man. It was just, just people just walking all over the place, and you could just meet them up, and um, and you had product. You, you wanted to get your product to DJs, so you seen some DJs. You could just give them product, uh, like a like a moving mobile um record pool right in your face on the streets of Miami. So it was it was it was fun. It was wild. It was fun. It was crazy. It was just a um a very interesting, cool kind of vibe. And we had these magazines and we had this um this independent label that we were pushing uh um some some Wu Tang single and we were connect it was connected to uh, Another couple of unreleased albums on, um, you know, we was just going through different phases of uh, of of recording and trying to sell recording, and we we was hitting stores, putting stuff on consignment, um, while we were at the convention. Uh, but just to give you an overlay of what was what was happening then, like what, uh, you remember the mid nineties? It was what it was. Um, you remember the uh, um, the albums that were out? Um, it was written was out. The fantastic uh, Slum Village was out. Uh, Shook Ones was was hidden heavy. The uh, really first big Mob Deep joint, Regulate Warren G. Murder was a case that was bumping. Then you had uh, you know Life After with Big and the I Got Next the Rapture joint with uh Chris remix joint to the Blondie joint and Wu the Wu Tang Forever was out, um uh, trying to think. Uh Cube, West Side Connection, Lethal Injection, all that stuff. Cam, he had an album that was out, Made in America. All this stuff was on I had all that stuff on cassette tape. And then um uh yeah man, Beats, Rhymes and Life. Then you had those heavy, heavy those heavy. heavy singles like Looney's Flavor in Your Ear, Coolio, Gangsta's Paradise. Um, you know, all this stuff was just out. It was just a bunch of singles, man. I remember that. Um, but that Renee remix joint with the Jelly Bean Benitez beat, that was hidden. And, you know, I mean, you just had uh, remixes that came out that was so dope. Like um, the Kooji Rap joint, the 456 album, um, the It's a Shame remix by Prince Marky D was heavy. But you just had all of this stuff going on, man. It was just a lot of product in the mid '90s, and then you had um, the the South takeover. You know the, um, the 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 saturation of the market by No Limit. That was the key here. Like, well, but also just the South itself was its own animal, and. Um, the South and I guess the Bay kind of merged, like the the whole Chitlin circuit extended on to the Bay with the you know E40, Too Short, and the Dangerous Crew and all that. But 
you had just so much stuff from the South coming out at that time. And, uh, you know, No Limit just, just hit it and said, how are I? you know, and he was like, all right, M- Master P. He was like, all right, I'm just going to hit this whole joint so hard and so heavy with so much product that his team just became a force to be reckoned with. But the South, man, it was just his own animal. I mean, it, years later, I had a mad appreciation for it. But back then, I was such a wordsmith trying to pay attention to the craft of um, um, uh, excellent, strange, wild, crafted poetry like from the Northeast guys. But, you know, everything was still bumping, though. I just didn't understand it because I was so young and green. But what was out then, uh, the soul food, the cell therapy, before CeeLo Green went solo, there was, um, you know, that goody mob stuff and cast Southern Playlistic with the uh, AT Aliens. Uncle Luke, uh, they're shaking a little something. Up. Nasty as they want to be was still kind of bumping because, you know, that, that damn firecracker sample was just so hidden. Uh, it, it was hidden heavy in, um, in Miami at that time, even still. You know, Luke always going to get some play in the streets, some cars bumping it. But um, since uh, No Limit had that sweetheart deal from um, Priority Records to drop as many records as he wanted, I mean, it was... It was trash. I mean, a lot of it was trash. If you look at uh, uh, any type of uh, progressiveness or positivity coming from the the label itself, that's why uh, Master P got dropped from uh, the NBA because his records were so against um, political correctness. They had to drop him. He played uh, for the Hornets. I remember, I remember watching the uh, the, the No Limit uh, Chronicles docu series, which was really dope, and. Um, that kind of gave me the inspiration to do this episode because when I met him, I met that guy, man. Shoot, man. I met Percy Miller, man, Master P at a, at a conference, at a uh, independent labels conference inside of How Can I Be Down in 96. Before I got to the panel discussion inside of the conference, my bad, the panel discussion, I remember seeing... Uh, the dude's uh, promotion budget just off the chain because he had full-fledged buses in Miami with the Ice Cream Man poster just riding around. Like, yo, this dude is not going to be um, ignored. Like, you know, end-to-end burners, uh, they used to say on the trains in New York, he had end-to-end burner advertisements for the Ice Cream Man. And they were just rolling through the whole uh, convention of uh, How Can I Be Down? And then... You know, see, you was in the midst of this uh, Southern takeover, and you could see it live and in person right in front of your face. And even though the the product might have been garbage, but, you know, there's something about, man, there's something about Southern FBA culture, foundational black American culture of the South at that time. They would support a product so thoroughly. Like, um... They didn't even pursue bootlegs or mixtapes or anything. They wanted the product. They wanted the um, the actual um, studio recording, and they bought it all the way. They didn't. They didn't mess around. Like they, even though Master P would put out uh, records like newspapers, man, they would come out every couple of weeks. Uh, the Chitlin Circuit would just eat it up. They didn't even care, man. They wanted to buy anything the guy put out. Because it was so relatable to the, uh, you know, this this down south cat's minds, man. Just everything was about what, um, dope man, slanging, um, smacking hoes, getting ass, playerism, bitches, pimping bitches, uh, being the um, most effervescent player. You know, once you once you actually ride and chill with homies that have uh, Broham Cadillacs with oakwood steering wheels and um, crush seats with with the plush interior with air fresheners everywhere, a piff that's lit and then that's kind of like floating around inside of the lack with uh, a cup full of ice doused with some some um, you know any type of uh, low-grade to mid-grade cognac. 
And that's an experience in itself, and that's relatable so much um, to the whole uh, mystique of No Limit. And that's why cats, cats ate it up, man. They could relate. And how are you riding? Well, you're riding shotgun. Riding on um, um, clean-ass white wall trues and Vogue spokes. And once you experience that shit, man, it's like, man... You really understand what this shit is. It's like bourbons and lax. This shit is so organic, organically felt within the um, the southern uh, player's mindset. It's like there was no there was no stopping them. That's why it was no limit. There's no stopping them. People, black uh, black alpha FBA males in the south would eat that shit up all day. Buy that shit thoroughly, man. Every single CD tape he put out. So. By that time, I mean, he was already, he was already paid. He was already the, the predestined ghetto Bill Gates before motherfuckers really knew him like that. Um, you know what I mean? That's, once again, the South was his own animal. He was uh, winning the game strictly on that audience, uh, supporting him into the half a million to 800,000 to a million copies sold. And independently with um, hardly any promotion, really. Ain't no ter- terrestrial airplay on that shit. Dudes, dudes would go to ghetto record stores, man, and buy No Limit CDs like it was a Lucy cigarette. That's why he had end caps in mostly all the ghetto stores. The end cap was right there, right when you walk into the, um, the hood record shop. It was like, boom. A big ass whack full of no limit right in the front. Pop that no limit, put it on a register, ten dollars, walk out. And it was like, you know, the record store <laughs> I hate to say that, but the record store started to uh act like uh, a crack window. Dudes just run in, run out. Didn't worry about anything else in the store, didn't need to look, nothing right there. Where the end cap was, no limit. The new one's out. Buy it. You out the door. That's how much power the guy had, man. He had the um, he had the whole Southern Chitlin Circuit mindset of all these all these dudes right in his hand. I mean, it's some powerful shit, man. So anyway. At the How Can I Be Down convention, it was a um, independent labels panel. So the independents were there. Uh, they were kick-ass independents, like big independents that had um, imprints with majors. So uh, I'm remembering Pendulum. Pendulum was there, you know, from the um, uh, the label that had Digable, Digable Planets, Loads of the Underground. Um, they had, I think they still had Melissa Morgan on there. They had a couple of other big independent imprints there. And then um, they invited No Limit to speak at the panel. So, P came in late. You know, he was a little bit buzzed, stumbling, coming in. He, before he came in, though, they had these, you know, it was some bougie professionalism dudes talking to some, try to give you this scene here, some dudes, a couple of white ladies, just some real professional, uh, bougie, um, real kind of uppity stink business type uh, folks that were trying to explain how their whole independent in print works where the a and r departments of major labels uh how they how they view um, a major kick-ass independent and how they're going to put an imprint on a major and um you know how does how does a major look at a kick-ass independent as attractive to bring it on to a major i mean they were really talking some professional verbiage jargon it, it, if you guys can ever remember hoppy and smitty from um this old show with red fox called sanford and son it was really uh hoppy and smitty it was a hoppy version of what was going on in the panel like they were 
they were explaining things. So, it, it, plus the panel was in the morning, right after breakfast. So you had to really get up if you wanted to make the panel. And then you looked at the itinerary and say, "Hey, man, there's an Independence Labels uh, panel going on in the morning." So me and Iz went out there because we seen the itinerary. It was mildly packed. It was uh, the room might have fit maybe uh, two hundred people. It was probably about a hundred and fifty people in there. So it was it was mildly packed because they wanted the information, and they were you know people were listening, taking notes here and there. Um, had uh, portable portable recorders. I had my portable recorder on me all the time, and I was trying to feel it out. Um, and um, then, you know, P walks in. P walks in late. He came maybe like 40 minutes late. He was stumbling, came in. Everybody kind of laughed a little bit when he came in stumbling. I mean, come on, man. That nigga was paid, bro. He was already paid coming in here um, to give the game to us, to youngsters coming up, trying to figure out how this whole thing works as an independent label person up your own shit. So he was uh, on the panel, and he didn't even, he didn't say anything. He just said, "Good morning, y'all." Master P here, no limit. He sat down and kind of listened to what the uh, corporate professionalism bougie um, p- people were talking about, and he listened for maybe fifteen twenty minutes, and then um, then he. There was a, there was a nice little silence on the mic, real little, little bit, and then he he got in, got on the mic, and he said, "Man, y'all, y'all don't, don't have, have a clue how, how this shit, shit works." <laughs> <laughs> he said that shit to the professional people that were connected to EMI and all this, you know, the pretty huge. Uh, what do you call? Can you call them major independents? Big, big independents. Um supposedly on the same level as No Limit. So, <clears throat> excuse me, he was on the mic and said, man, you motherfuckers don't have a clue of how any of this shit works at all, man. And uh, everybody kind of chuckled and laughed and they looked at the guy and then he's, he just started rolling out some of the heaviest game I ever heard. And then, you know, he was on the mic, man, spitting on how how it went down, and I was hanging on every word, dog. Um, the dude broke it all the way down. He said, "Man, you gotta go in the deepest parts of the hood. You gotta go to your hood, okay? Where are the the blacks in the ghetto? And you gotta you gotta map out who is in the hood that has." the the biggest car or you if you have a car with a huge trunk like a lincoln or a cadillac you have your car uh fill it up with your product and go right into the deepest parts of the hood um you got to be connected to um anybody that's in the hood that has the flyest car with the biggest sound system in 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 there um and you know you always uh, kind of see this and you just have to connect with that person. And then um, you go into the hood, you connect with that person, you um, see how your product sounds in his car, and then uh, you get flossy with it. And if you can connect really well with dudes like that in the hood with those types of cars, then you go to um, any type of barbecue or any type of a, um, uh, basketball court in the hood with that music that you just made playing on his system. Then uh, people will get interested. Uh, you might have a few giveaways at, at some of the barbecues there. And, um, and then you make sure that the cover artwork for your CD is a poster style cover artwork artwork inside of the stores that they go to and um you you have to case out the store like okay what's the main store in the ghetto that these people go to and then you have um a a beautifully laid out end cap 
in that particular store and just lace it with your product, uh, posters, uh, stickers, uh, everything that, um, that, that basically that, uh, particular neighborhood likes and boom, you just got your, um, a gold star marketing award right there from the ghetto Bill Gates. Then he said, after you accomplish that, then you do that in particular cities across the Chitlin circuit, man. He said, all right, you do that in uh, Miami, a couple small markets, go to Houston, go to Atlanta, go to um, different, different areas of uh, Northern Texas, uh, Richmond, California, you just map out certain Louisiana, of course, you, you map out certain areas um, in certain hoods and you have to drive there in, you know, a, a decked out a car and you have to get with um, those particular types of dudes in those types of cities. And that was um, promotions from the perspective of, of Master P. And then... All that was actually confirmed after I watched the No Limit Chronicles uh, docuseries. And, um, you know, when they were going through the show of how he was uh, slinging CDs out of his car. And, you know, of course, I didn't know that, you know, he had uh, he had some illegal variations to it where he was slinging dope with the CD um, just to make sure <laughs> that was kind of like kind of fucked up but damn you know it, it, it'll break you down when you see that part of it because damn you you're attaching uh crack sales to the cd itself to make sure the numbers go up in the billboard magazine that's a whole another type of story right there but um but i didn't know that that was go actually going on but um he broke it down in that docuseries and it was like whoa that was kind of a heartbreaker because damn that's once again, this whole uh, record game was just laced with criminality and cr uh, criminology uh, across the board. And um, back in the mid 90s, you know, I was green, man. Um, I didn't know how much uh, crime was, was tied to all this stuff, but uh, learned a lot. And that was it, man. Um, learned a whole lot from that panel discussion. And after um, it was over, met the guy face to face, shook his hand. And I was like, wow, man, I was really intrigued. I was ready to be a no living soldier right there. Uh, a little bit in the back of my mind, I was like, damn, you should just join this dude since he's freaking winning the motherfucking game hands down. But you know what I'm saying? I was kind of cautious because I didn't know uh, that, um, how, how that product was uh, was was soaking in uh, criminology, but um, great time. It was a good um, lesson, and um, that was it. Y'all can take what you want from it. Yeah, I mean, was it wrong for him to saturate the rap market with a product about slang and dope, ratchet thuggery, and southern hoodlumism? I mean, it might have been wrong in some instances, but looking back in hindsight, man, what is the goal of a record label, man, to sell records? And the dude, when the smoke clears, you know, he sold over 70-something million records, even if he's getting uh, $3 a copy because it's his own label di being distributed by um, a major. Even if he's getting $3, he's still, that's uh, what quarter of a billion beers and boy um and to take that money and go on to all these other ventures uh with the film and and the rap snacks i mean i can't i can't really hate on him looking at everything in hindsight looking back um i can't really hate on the guy um because when i met him he was cordial and he seemed he seemed uh together cordial humble as well even when i saw him um a little while ago on the earn your leisure and the um the um breakfast club interview the dude just seemed like a um a solid guy that don't seem like a pure 
breaded, uh, just fucked all the way up asshole. He just didn't seem like that. Uh, from when I met him to when he looked at his interviews now, so I can't really, I can't really hate on a guy that, after all these uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, man, he still seems like a, uh, a, a, a somewhat humble dude, man, and a cordial guy that's always willing to reshape different markets as a uh, FBA, you know, financial black American entrepreneur. I just I can't hate on that, I, you know. Uh, other other people that's doing that type of stuff, that's making that type of money, but they're like assholes or they just uh, incredibly egotistical, wild uh, narcissistic maniacs. Then I can't, yeah, I can't. But Master P didn't seem like that, man. He didn't seem like that type of guy, man. So. That's my little two cents, man. On the How Can I Be Down convention, the independent labels panel with the No Limit Mastermind, Percy Miller, in 1996. Yo, big up, Father Lux. Yo, peace out, Herb Scratch, Big City Red, Block Royale, Block South Beats, my man Jay Mizop doing the full Rex hip hop. All the old school insomniac crew, we out. Um, yo, if anybody want to submit some beats, you can do that. Uh, my Skyver at Gmail. Um, just make sure they're mixed tight within, you know, Pro Tools. And a big shout out to all the Skybarians, you know, all the uh, cats out there feeling Skyverific on the Skyver app, trying to get your paper up. Um, let's get into some rhymes so y'all can guess the rhymes and see if y'all can get some money on that thing so let's check it out make sure that you send in your name and number um the title of the the song and the, and the name of the artist and you know if extra credit y'all want to do the label whatever uh first person to do it uh it gets you what 30 bucks get you 30 bucks on your skyro account um you know what? We'll do uh, the first three people that do it. You can get thirty dollars. Um, let's let's check it out. All right, first rhyme. Ba 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 ba. Yo, I got a friend named Flo. I got a friend named Blow with a finger named Clap that I leave you on the side like a kango hat. He ain't have no choice. He was born this way. These streets put your number like a phone display. Ba 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 ba. Second rhyme. Deal with that snitch player, 86's graduation. We fly like cold Klondikes. I'll be on the aviation. Airheads like foot apparel. Black leather wrap. See me Daryl Mac. See me Daniels. We do handles. Break a break a love maker. We came to win. Huh. Back, 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 back it up. Dun, 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 dun. Third rhyme. You are strolling the club. This, everybody should know this one. Check it out. Yo, I stroll in the club with my hat down, Michael Jack style, high stepping, who the Mac now? Not my fault, they love the kid, might be the chain or the whip, I don't know what it is, we just party and bullshit. Come on, mommy, put your body in motion, you got a nigga open. You came here with the heart to check, so you need to sing the song with me. Oh, my lady. <laughs> All right. Three rhymes, three dudes. Whoever send in the rhymes, title of the song, um, the name of the artist, pop your little gas money on the Skyver. Just to reiterate, y'all, Skyver Quick Pay is up. The payment app for us, by us. Y'all hit me up with a 50 spot or more, and I'll let you guys know one-on-one -on, -one on how to use Skyver to get indie music publishing on it. Quick Pay me on up at... 407-260-8186-407-260-8186 or you can hit me up at SkyberTeamDolomite at ProtonMail.com for any questions that you might have on the service. Uh, all right. Y'all, I'll check y'all all out on the next show. Peace, Peace Dave Steve. One love. love.